Has there ever been a game or a series of games that either your friends or people that you follow on social media have talked very highly about and you've always wanted to try, but you never got around to doing so, even if you bought the games? Well, in my case, one of these is Grandia right here. This is the PlayStation version of the game. Now, interestingly enough, from what I understand, the PlayStation version is not nearly as good as its Saturn counterpart, but since I don't have a Saturn, this is as close as I got. I picked this up from GameStop Online a couple of years ago when I found it in stock, and I was building my PlayStation collection. I played it for about an hour, and I liked what I played, but what I had heard was the combat system was interesting and fun, and yes, it is. I heard the story was okay, and I guess it kind of is. But with me, I'm afflicted by this weird, and it's not a real disease, but a, a weird affliction called Gamer Attention Deficit Disorder, or GAD for short. Because I have so many games in my library, I play them each for maybe an hour, maybe a little longer, maybe a little less, depending on my free time, and then I wind up finding myself wanting to move away because I have so many other games to get to. And as often as I've heard some good things about Grandia, it just it never was enough by playing in the game to really hold my interest and make me keep playing. So I kind of put it off to the side, I put it on the back burner, and I've always been meaning to get back to it, but I really haven't been able to do so. But what's interesting is that I've gone ahead and I've secured other Grandia games that I'm hopefully going to get to because I've heard such good things about them. For example, uh, this guy right here, this is the Dreamcast version of Grandia 2. And I also have the PlayStation 2 version, so I have both to play. Uh, the Dreamcast version of Grandia looks quite nice. I did play it for a little while, and I did like what I played, but again, I never really got around to playing it for very long. Haven't played the PlayStation 2 version of the game. I have heard that it's a little bit worse, but that's neither here nor there, really. So I have these that I eventually do want to get back around to playing. And oh, there's a Grandia 3 which I found at a local video game store a few years ago, and it's been kind of sitting, and I have not gotten around to playing it at all. Uh, this is a two-disc game from what I understand. Yep, there are two discs in here. Um, I don't have the instruction manual, unfortunately, but again, it's another game that I'd like to be able to get around to playing one day. Grandia is just one of those series that I had heard so many good things about. I felt like I was missing out, almost like a FOMO, fear of missing out kind of deal, where if I didn't have the games, then I was going to be missing something. And RPGs especially kind of fall by the wayside for me. I think there are only a handful that I've really completed for traditional turn-based RPGs, Final Fantasy IV or Final Fantasy II Easy Type for the Super Nintendo. That's the only one I've ever played all the way through. The other ones I play for a while, sometimes a good long while, but I really don't find myself getting around to finishing. Uh, action RPGs like Champions of Norath or Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, those I tendly tend to play through to the end because I find the gameplay loop to be quite addictive, especially the looting aspect. So what does this have to do with Unsealed, you're asking? Well, I have a game that I've been sitting on since Retro World Expo 2019 that uh, was worth a fair amount of money, and I wanted to grab it because I wanted to open it up. It's a game that I didn't have in my collection. It is the one piece of Grandia that I did not have, and I have it now. This is Grandia Extreme, kind of like the black sheep of the family from what I understand. Uh, originally $49.99 from... Electronics Boutique, although only $9.99 when you trade in two PlayStation 2, Xbox, or GameCube games. And the, yeah, that's the price tag. That's what it was worth. I was able to talk the seller down a little bit, uh, but $90 is what the value is going to be at the show. I know nothing about this. What struck my attention or got my attention was the voice work or the voice cast. And I don't know if you can see that. Featuring voice work by Mark Hamill, Dean Cain, and Lisa Loeb. So you have three fairly recognizable voice talents in this game. And from what I understand, this is more dungeon crawling based or dungeon based. And I tend to, tend to like battles and RPGs versus the exploration aspect. So I'm hoping when I eventually get around to trying this, and yeah, right, uh, that I'll be able to enjoy this for what it is. Now, again, I have heard some mixed reviews and some mixed testimony about the game, but I haven't really tried it for myself. I did find a used copy of it from GameStop. It was just disc only. It didn't have the case, but I really wanted to have at least the case, if not the game complete, and I was lucky enough to land one. So we're going to open this up. 
on camera today and we're going to see what the instruction manual looks like and see if I can find out more about the game itself. The game just uh, celebrated an anniversary. It looks like it celebrated its 18-year release anniversary. It looks like it was released in 2002, although I could be wrong. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open it, and we're going to see what this is about. So let us go ahead and start the opening process. Um, always tough when I'm watching myself on the webcam, <laughs> so I don't screw this up. So now we turn this sideways. We take the bottom off. And then we slide the top off just like that. See you later, plastic. And oh yeah, still has the ID sticker at the top, Grandia Extreme. Enix is the publisher, so this is before the Square Enix merger. From the elements shall come disorder. From disorder shall come destruction. From destruction shall come rebirth. Thus it is foreseen. And there is a lot of exposition here on the back. Let's see. The Grandia series makes a triumphant return with its all-new adventure. Prepare to fight your way through over 130 types of enemies in eight elemental lands. The acclaimed Grandia combat system has been tuned to perfection with total AI customization and new strategic battle options. So that sounds like it's pretty interesting. If you like battle systems like I do, then it's something that should be right up my alley. Discover new battle skills, forge combat-tested strategies, and lay waste to your opponents. Delve deeply into the mysteries of magic by finding and fusing mana eggs in unpredictable combinations. Crafting? Meh. A unique, customizable system allows you to create your own enchantments. Vibrant details and exceptional special effects bring the saga to life in stunning richness. Unravel the mystery of the elemental disorder and retire a hero. Fail and the fate of the planet shall be shaken to its foundations. And we'll take a look here at some of the screenshots. There's not a lot to see. And again, I'm sorry for the glare. But we're going to go ahead and open this up. And we're going to see what this is about. This is exciting. I have not seen one of these complete ever. Uh, so I'm kind of excited about this. By the time I was interested in the Grandia series, especially this game, it was already off store shelves. And then I really didn't have any interest in it until I picked up Grandia within the last few years. All right, you go over there. So when we open this up, here we go. Oh, okay. We have a blue, white, red, and gold CD, and we have what looks to be a fairly comprehensive instruction manual, so we're going to go ahead and take that out because that's what I covered on the show. And when we take a look, first of all, we take a look on the back, and it looks like a an ad for Robotic Alchemic Drive, or RAD. On the back, I've heard some things about this game, although it's been kind of mixed, and I really haven't had any personal interest in it, but maybe I should look out for it in the near future. The manual, unfortunately, is in black and white, which is a little surprising considering how old the game is, and this was a time when you got both uh, black and white and color strategy guides before. It's pretty intricate. There's a bunch of story information here, uh, which I'm not going to read if, for the sake of brevity. Um, let's see if there are... There are uh, information about the characters and this is why I liked strategy, uh, strategy guides this is why I liked instruction manuals back then is not only did they tell you how to play the games but they also talked to you about the characters the settings so you felt like when you were getting into the game itself you already were armed with information and you know a lot about what was going on in each game so we have characters like Evan Carmine Brandel Mayam Ulk uh, Jade Tito Lutina Colonel Croitz Second Lieutenant Dien Specto uh, so a nice or a decent cast of characters, and then we're talking about the different settings for the game in terms of battle and in terms of exploration, so that's pretty neat. Uh, the manual is hefty. The manual is, uh, let's see if there's page numbers. There actually aren't page numbers, but it's a fair thickness, as you can see here. It's not a light instruction manual by any stretch. Interestingly, that there's not uh, interesting that there isn't any, or there aren't any page numbers, I should say. There's a nice little tip section, uh, game tips for adventurers. So that's something I'll probably read before I wind up playing the game, as well as some information about the items, the spells in the game, the weapons, so on and so forth. There is also a warranty card, which we will go over really quickly, that you could mail to Enix America in Seattle, Washington. 
So first name, last name, email, city, state, territory, zip code, birthday. Where did you purchase this game? I purchased it from Retro World Expo. By the way, it's coming back to Connecticut in September of 2020. And I'll have more details about that in a video very soon. Where did you first hear about Grandi Extreme? Was it a magazine review, a magazine ad, online review, online ad, friend recommendation, magazine preview, rented it, strategy guide, played friends, copy, or enix.com? What video game magazines do you read regularly? And they don't give you choices. They just give you space to write two. So you could write any two that you want. What other magazines do you read regularly? What gaming websites do you visit regularly? And sadly, there are only two choices or only two options to write things down on. What game systems do you currently own? I find this interesting. GameCube, Game Boy Advance, Xbox, and PC. GameCube is listed first, which I find to be fascinating because GameCube really didn't get a lot of support from Enix, at least not at this point. Game Boy Advance, great handheld, by the way. Xbox and PC. How fast do you usually access the internet? I don't use the internet as an option. 56K modem or cable modem? I used 56K for a while, although thankfully by this point in history, I was, I was using high speed. Uh, have you visited enix.com? And do you plan to purchase robotic alchemic drive for the PlayStation 2? That's a pretty interesting question. So I'm looking forward to putting this through its paces. Again, I don't have a lot of information on it. There's obviously quite the instruction manual for me to look through in order to understand it. At some point when I get some extra time, I'd like to be able to go through and just start playing some of these games, maybe over my February vacation, which is coming in a couple of weeks. Perhaps that will happen. Um, but this is a game that I'm glad that I have. Now I now have most, if not all, of the Grandia games that I have to look in, uh, I'd have to look online and make sure that I'm not missing any. I was tempted to buy some of the ones for the Switch, but since I already have the main ones, then I really don't need to double dip, at least not that I don't think. So, was this game worth the money? I don't know whether it was necessarily worth the money, because I haven't played it yet, but I will say that it's really cool to be opening a brand new RPG from 2002-2003 in 2020. It was really exciting to open it. I'm really eager to try it once I get some spare time. And we do have plenty of other games to come, plenty of more episodes to come in the future as well. And I hope you'll join me for those. Until the next time, my friends, take care of yourselves and each other. And we'll do this again real soon. Take care.